Good morning, Pushamadid. Well, this morning, Pushy Shivan with us. Sahar ke lewa. Assalamu alaikum. Ji ayanu. Pakhela gale. Niha. Juno shumbe. Washmale. Ohaya Gonzaimis. Guten Morgen. Ola. Bo your previous. Kaifa hal. Hale shuma chatore. Ahlan masalan. Marhaba. Buna. Mucho. Gracias. Swabi. Abhali kare aya. Hosh gal den. And thank you very much, everybody, for tuning into PTV World. You're definitely watching World well, this morning. morning alongside the very fantastic, amazing. And a wonderful colleague, and she happens to be Miss Mahin Jafri. I happen Thank to be Shazad Asan Khan, and we hope and pray that everybody out there is ready to kickstart their day with, with us. us. But first things first, hello Mahin, kya hal hai aapka? Assalamu alaikum Shazad, I'm perfectly fine, aap sunai. Well, I think so far so good, alhamdulillah, I did give, give myself a little bit of positive uh, head talk to wow, go up, so you, you know, you early you in the morning, and I was that. like, so because when I woke up, I was wow. like, you know what, I should actually take a day off. Then I was like, you know, that the topic is just so amazing that whatever we're going to True. discuss today will benefit millions of people out there. Exactly. You know, within Pakistan, you know, even if we talk about the entire population, which is somewhere around 220 million, ladies and gentlemen, but today is the day when I'm literally very happy, ecstatic, and I'm going to rejoice myself that I'm glad, I'm thankful to Allah Almighty that Allah gave me this opportunity that I will be giving this information to you. What is that? We will definitely come back to that as well. But what about you? What did you early do early in the morning? I'm also very happy, but not because of the reasons that you're telling. Okay. Uh, I had my, uh, you know, Eastern kind of breakfast, and I just love that. So sometimes if Eastern you looks, uh, Eastern looks, actually <laughs> sounds so nice, but I think you, what you're trying to say is desi, right? Yes, desi nashta, yes. All right, yes. Well, what, what was the menu? Well, it was, of course, paratha anda. Paratha anda? Who else made the paratha? Well, my uh, cook. All right, well, yeah. well that's wonderful. Uh, was there desi ghee in it as well? Uh, uh, not desi ki, not desi but ki. I really enjoyed because sometimes there's happiness on a face and if you want to know the secret, there must be, the secret must be carbs. Yeah, it, it must be, it must be because, you know, I've heard it, my mother say that, uh, you know, mad ke dil ka rasta jo hai, uske peet se hota hai, something like that. <laughs> I don't know, mothers do I say think it's true. such I stuff. Think there's there's it? always a wisdom. Or what about women, secret? women? I think Unke same, dilon ka rasta unke ka dilon ka bhi yahi se hota <laughs> I think that's wonderful, but let's get the day started, ladies and gentlemen. Breakfast, obviously, is uh, one of the most important meals uh, of your day. Please make sure that you never skip that. And please make sure if your mother is not serving you with breakfast, ask her for breakfast as well, because it will definitely help you nurture and grow as well. But first things first, yeah, why don't top we stories. Go for, yes. Let's see what's happening in the country, and let's see what's happening in the world of uh, sports as well, uh, ladies and gentlemen. As we all know, Prime Minister Mia Mahmoud Shabazz Sharif Saab is visiting Turkey. The best part is that... Uh, Prime Minister Shabashi says Pakistan and Turkey are national partners and the two nations have always stood by each other in times of need and on the issues of core interest. And the best part over here is that uh, this is the 75th anniversary of Pakistan and Turkey's diplomatic relationships as well. And we are glad that, you know, that the Turkish government has actually hosted our Prime Minister Saab as well. And they have certainly went through talks where they're talking about uh, education, they're talking about technology. And I think in days to come, that's something which we will witness over here in Pakistan. True. And uh, with that, high-level delegation meetings would also be there. And the next news is related to that. High-level Turkish delegations led by Foreign Minister Mevlut Kavasolo called on Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif and Ankara. Foreign Minister Bilawal Puto Zardari and other members of Pakistani delegation were also present in the meeting. And it's great to see Pakistan prospering on the diplomatic front as well. But now let's take a look at what's happening in the world of sports, ladies and gentlemen. Finally, we are bouncing back in hockey too as well. And it's because of the fact that Pakistan actually beat Bangladesh 8-0 in the Men's Hockey Asia Cup in Jakarta. With the win, Pakistan finished 5th in the Asian Champions Trophy. Bangladesh never won any match against Pakistan since their first meeting in 1982. I think Bangladesh needs to be more sad than us. <laughs> Even though hockey is our national sport, uh, I mean, and uh, for the last few years, we have not been able to win any major cup as well. So we really need to put our heads to that. And maybe commercialize that a bit more? I mean, it is commercialized. It's just that that you would never buy the ticket. You would rather call me and be like, Shazad, I <laughs> hockey come match, they ticket to de do. You know, so we That's really so need to true. get rid of this mentality. Yeah, yeah. And the next news, of course, is about sports. Pakistan won five medals, including two gold, and got the third position in the Imam Raza Athletics Championship in the Javelin Throw. Mohammed Yasser won the gold medal of 74.83 meters. Wow, congratulations. Pakistan is doing wonderful, even at the diplomatic front and even at the sports front as well. And I believe that this is really very important to project Pakistan and the image of Pakistan as well. And the athletes, the artists, wherever they go, ladies and gentlemen, they carry the flag with themselves as well. So it's great 
brilliant and thank you very much for giving pride to Pakistan as well. Now, what are we talking about today? I'm really excited about it. Well, we are talking about something that even I didn't know and I had to really uh, study, but we are talking about digitalization. So sad about it? <laughs> oh, even if you don't know it. Okay, okay. I it's can all right. You know, we're yeah, here okay. to learn, right? Yeah, so I was uh, studying about this Pakistan single window digitalization and when we talk about globalization and the systems and the integration of technologies, uh, we come to know so much about, uh, you know, connections, uh, the data, uh, we can look at it, the interface is easy, it's user friendly, things like that. But how come they have digitalized that, we talk about that and how is it helping uh, to ease the trade in Pakistan and boosting international trade as well? Exactly. And ladies and gentlemen, it's really very important, you know, because for people now these days, Alhamdulillah, more than people looking for jobs, they're looking for better opportunities to have their own businesses. So imagine that, you know, if we are into import and export and that if we are to send something abroad, you know, the process was really very lengthy. You mm -hmm. have, and mm -hmm. even if somebody sent you a car or a gift or something, it was a difficult job, you know, a person hassle, like me would never agency, step outside yes. and it's because of the fact you would have to go to the dry port, they will mm -hmm. give you a customs agent, mm -hmm. the customs agent then will have his own tantrums, I'm very sorry to say that, and then he'll be like, too. sir, patani, and you know, they, they, you definitely do come across situations where you like, you know, the customs agent will actually scare you as well. Mm -hmm. He's like, sir, mm -hmm. cheap cheese mm -hmm. list me, na me <laughs> you know, So for all of those things, you know, we, we would always get worried that, hey, you know what, I wasn't doing anything illegal till the time the customs agent spoke up. True. So ladies and gentlemen, when we talk about transit trade, when we talk about Pakistan being blessed to have a, such a geographical location that a lot of trade routes fall in the place as well, and that we are building up on that, uh, I think what was really very important is that when we talk about the industrial revolution, or when we talk about the uh, information technology, I think it needs to be integrated and it needs to be integrated True. in a way where me, uh, Maheen, you know, for you people out there can actually do it just by sitting at home on your laptop and at the convenience of whatever you want to order for yourself or probably export to your customers as well. And I think it's going to make life easier for a lot of people, which is why it's called Pakistan Single Window as well. So it's a single window solution. How did that happen? that we got to a point that finally, you know, there will be transparency and we will make sure that there will be an increase in trade as well. But we're very lucky to have been joined by people behind this entire project, entire plan, which will actually give uh, a leap start to Pakistanis as well when we talk about sure. trade. So ladies and gentlemen, without <coughs> any further ado, we're very lucky that we have been joined by the man himself who actually happens to be the Chief Executive Officer of Pakistan Single Window, and he is Mr. Sayyid Aftab Heather Saab. Hello, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Good, good, good morning. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. How are you? Thank you very much. I'm doing great. And after all this uh, talk of Desi Nashta, you know, <laughs> I'm feeling <laughs> fantastic. I think it's wonderful. Thank you very much, sir, once again. And ladies and gentlemen, when we talk about technology, obviously you do need the brains too as well. And uh, so for Pakistan Single Window, the technological brain came from who we refer to as the digital strategy advisor. He is uh, Mr. Athar Fahim. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much. Th Absolutely fine. Thank you very much for joining us. Wonderful to have you, sir. So first things first, obviously, what is Pakistan's single window for all our audiences out there? Because we go out in 46 different countries. Make me happy because I was sad. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you very much, guys. I mean, I think that's a great introduction that you made for the single window. I wouldn't have been able to do a better intro. For, so thank you very much for that. Exactly. Thank you also for having us here. I think we have a great story to tell. Uh, Pakistan single window is one of the major public sector reform initiatives to have come up in the past few years, I would say, um, we started our journey in 2017. Wonderful. And Alhamdulillah, in 2022, we are looking at closing the first phase of single window implementation in June 2022, which is also Pakistan's commitment under the World Trade Organization's Trade Facilitation Agreement. So uh, it has been a wonderful journey, and we welcome all opportunities to present our side of the story, not only within Pakistan, but also to international audiences, because there's a lot uh, that we have learned on this way. And there's a lot that we can share with others who are trying to do similar projects. So what is single window? Um, basically, when we talk about windows, uh, everyone always thinks about the physical infrastructure. Log soch ta mein khirki bana rahe, and you know there would be some official behind that, and would be interacting. Say we go to Nadra's office. And you know there have been some great initiatives uh, in the government on single window, uh, on one window, I would say, jahan pe different facilities ko ikatha kare jata hai. Ours is a very different concept. Single window is basically an electronic platform, and what we are doing is we are trying to connect uh, customs, the banking sector, all the private sector people who are involved in trade, whether they are traders, they are clearing agents, they are service providers, insurers, transporters, freight forwarders, and connecting them with government agencies who regulate trade. Or when we talk about regulation, you will be surprised to know that although customs is the one that is at the borders, 
uh, clearing the goods, dealing with the passengers, but there are about 74 government organizations who trade to regulate trade. So, for example, if you want to export a container of rice, uh, you probably need a phytosanitary certificate from the Department of Plant Protection. If you are importing something from abroad, you would need a Standards Quality Control Authority, NOC for that. And you know, if you count them all up, uh, it's almost uh, about 1.2 million documents that we are talking about. So what Single Vento <coughs> does is provide you a single platform. So we eliminate human interaction. You, like you said, you sit at the from the comfort of your homes or your offices with your device. You do all your import, export, translated stuff over there. Get rid of the there. documents. Get rid of the documents. This totally paperless. We don't believe in papers. We don't even believe in scanned documents in the system. Right. Everything right. is digitalized. So, when we talk about single window ki baat karte and technology, ki baat karte hai, we are not talking about a simple process where you would be asked to scan a document and somebody would look at that document and make a decision. No. What is happening is that you are in then. giving mm -hmm. the data in a very structured way. The system is deciding for you. And where the system won't decide because of the risk parameter or something, then there would be human intervention in that. Right. Uh, so, that is the basic concept behind it. Uh, we started uh, rolling out in July 2021. Uh, so far, we have been able to uh, take customs registration totally online. We have integrated 26 out of 27 banks with the platform, which means that we have complete visibility over what is going to be imported or exported in the next two or three months. For example, uh, we have activated the Department of Plant Protection and just yesterday, we deployed the animal quarantine department also okay, in the wow. system. So the complete system has been digitalized because there is so much involved in this. Yes, and it has been a it has been a fantastic journey. I mean, um, so, so Pakistan Customs has led this initiative. Uh, I have a customs background. I used to be a customs officer, and Pakistan Customs was, you know, asked by the government to lead this because they had this track record of digitization in their processes. But now it has gone bigger than Pakistan Customs. So we are a national program. Wow. The company that I have the honor to lead is uh, a state-owned enterprise. It's a public sector organization, but it is a national organization. So our mandate actually goes beyond what custom does. And it includes all the 74 government departments. We have our own law called the Pakistan Single Window Act. And that has been also a very innovative experience that is being quoted around the world on how to build a single window actually. Wow. And, and, and sir, in addition to that, what I would want to ask over here is that, you know, since you, we obviously spoke about the exporters, importers and the banks being, um, you know, affiliated to the PSW as well. But how did you kind of make sure that everybody's interest uh, you're going to safeguard, you know, when mm. we talk about yeah. a single window operation of such sort as well? That's a, that's a very good question. Um, you know, one of the reasons that there, there are a lot of IT projects that, that are initiated and they fail. And they fail because uh, somebody has not done enough due diligence. And usually what happens is that people would come with a solution and they would try to impose that solution on the users. You know, This is not the way we work. Basically, our, uh, the process that we follow is a little bit tedious. It's longish, but we have a very inclusive, collaborative approach. All right. So there are three Cs that we usually follow. It's coordination, collaboration, and connectivity. That's mm. what we call for single window. And when we talk about collaboration, it means that for every process that we are going to bring in, we're taking on board all the government offices uh, mm. We at the table are the private sector people, are at the <coughs> table are the accurate users and with their collaboration, with their feedback, we develop a process right. and then we bring it in the system. Mm, that's Which lovely. is why I want to talk about the process as well. So uh, Atabai, I'll come back, uh, come to you as well. So now when we talk about such technologies being used, uh, I mean they cannot always be on point, right? You know, and uh, so, so since you have rolled out, have you ever considered that, okay, yeah, this might be a problem? Because, for example, if I'm pursuing a case, I'm on that's too online. Mm -hmm. And previously, you know, it was just okay, you know, I would go to a person and, and my work was being done. Mm -hmm. So now if there's a hiccup, you know, the person sitting in that window, <coughs> if there, it is supposed to be a physical one, will be like, I mean, a few of them, sir, system down, hai. <laughs> <laughs> sir, internet down, hai. and you know, all of these problems. Mm -hmm. So obviously, first, let us know about the technology you've used and how it's going to benefit all of us and then how do you think that you're going to eradicate all of these excuses hmm. which we might get True. okay well i would i would like to start from the digital transformation perspective sure. first that what exactly it is so adoption of adoption of technology is digital transformation but at the sa same time it is growing bigger now right. uh, there are mainly four pillars that we used to have sure. in, uh, while addressing the, the digital transformation specifically in the government departments. Uh, your people, process, technology, and your data. 
So these are four pillars, and these are actually the building blocks that we use to develop gradually. And this is what exactly Aftab has rightly said, that how we are actually developing our incre uh, the incremental approach towards our platform, because it's a, it's a national <coughs> level program. Mm. Now, addressing to that question that yes, uh, technology is definitely, because we are still dependent on technology mm. in mm. different ways. Uh, there is a heat ecosystem. We, we are relying on hardware. We relying on uh, networks. We also relying on the softwares. Mm. Uh, so there are lots rely of on human there resources are as well. On, on human resources yeah. as well. So so what we are actually trying to build, uh, our building blocks are actually in this way that what what we are actually from the global standards perspective, we are trying to build the digitally equipped human resource to be inducted. All right as much as possible, who, uh, who should enable the processes digitally enabled, right. which digitally enabled services to be delivered for the public. How That's did you say that? It sounded to me like a tongue twister. It's wonderful, yeah. yes. <laughs> Understandable at the same time. Yeah. So, so this is what exactly uh, the whole yeah. crux of, uh, of this platform is. That's why he's is. leading the yeah. technology. And outside. at the same time, uh, the way we are actually uh, approaching is, uh, I mean, uh, we are very proud that we have just rec recently oh, launched really? uh, our digital transformation office. And wow. that is actually very rare. I, I guess that we, we would be the first one in the public sector environment who has actually launched and established the digital transformation office, wow. which, uh, which gradually, you know, developed those building blocks in different terms. Because it's not just, you know, developing the platform. Right now, the focus system. is yeah. someone needs to develop the change management, yeah. create the change management. Mm. Someone needs to understand the trainings because that program needs to be trained. Uh, public should be aware about those trainings that how they will going to use it mm -hmm. at the end of the day. One needs to tackle the the support where where that question actually comes in mm -hmm. that someone w will going to you know call. Uh, Jamshed will get a call and say that, well, this system is out. Yeah. <laughs> what should I do? Yeah. And we are, we, we, we definitely face these problems. Then you would be like, yeah, how, how may I help? Yeah, <laughs> how can I help? Inside? So what we did actually, uh, uh, it's important to also uh, say that we have also uh, established our call center. Yeah. Uh, we say we we, wow. we established, uh, uh, we name it as uh, Trader Support Center. Uh, typically, it's not the call center; it's actually the trader support center, so that it addresses the everybody traders. Should call. Yeah, <laughs> traders help. They call me. Uh, <laughs> traders help, and that's how we are actually uh, using it. A and sir, in addition to that, you know, very quickly, so since we have established what PSW is, why don't you tell people how to kind of get it, uh, you know, on your laptop or probably where to get the assistance from? Because you know, sir, you were even mentioning that mm. you know that all of those rates are even available online. So now yeah. you really do not need to know. For example, you know, most of the time the question I get is, yeah, uh, you know, if it's transfer of residence and if you want to get our vehicle to Pakistan, how do we exactly. get it? Exactly. Now there's no single answer for it, or, or unified as well. <laughs> so you have done that as well. And how can we reach out to that? You know, for all of those platforms, please make sure that you uh, share that with us as uh, well. Yes, thank you, Shadar. I think that's a, that's a great uh, spot to actually plug in our latest product that we have uh, just launched in March on March 31st. <coughs> actually, it's called the Trade Information Portal. So you can access it at www.tippp.gov.pk. Once again, sir, once again. www.tippp.gov.pk. Uh, uh, Trade P Information P Portal P of P Pakistan. Okay, so it's tippp.gov.pk. And what it does is basically it provides you a single access point for all information that you want. So for example, if somebody is coming under a TR scheme and they want to bring a car, you don't need to find a custom wala to guide you. Basically, you just go on the website. You go through the simple search function. What we have done is that according to a standard model, <coughs> we have created a uh, search function so you can enter a commodity even if you don't know the HS codes for them. You would put in a generic description that would give you a complete guide of what are going to be the and taxes, what is going to be the process, which office do you need to approach, what forms do you need. Uh, if it's a paper-based system, it would give you a complete process map, visuals, Wow. along with uh, fee and the best thing is that the portal is in Urdu as well as in English. Wow. So oh, we have made sure lovely. that mm. people can avail it. Mm. Uh, another thing, and I, should, I think I should highlight that, is that the trade information portal is also a part of international commitment that Pakistan had under the trade facilitation agreement. Uh, and we are very proud to say that we, able, we were able to create it within nine months. Wow. Other countries wow. have taken years 
and uh, also we are being told that this trade information portal is being quoted as one of the best portals out there. Oh, uh, it just does not only provide information on <coughs> uh, import export, it also has additional information on entire banking ecosystem. Do you want to open the bank? Who is the contact point? Which is, uh, where is the office located? Which number do you need to call on? Wow. You need to approach a chamber of commerce, you want to find somebody in the women's chamber of commerce, we give you a province-wise details on that. We also connect exporters to their buyers abroad. So, for example, if there's an exporter who wants to export cotton to the US, you go to our portal, you click on your export destination, which is US, and the system will tell you what requirements US has on your cotton that wow. you need to comply with. And, and the best part is that, you know, uh, the way it sounded is that, you know, it looks simpler than a Shadi Wali website as well. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's great. And, and, you know, when I say so, it's because of the fact that I want to motivate our audiences out there as well to please make sure that you kind of have that, uh, uh, take that leap as well, where, ladies and gentlemen, it is because of your convenience that they have done that as well. And imagine that the originally it was supposed to cost us $167 million, but Alhamdulillah, all of these champions have completed it just Mashallah. under, I think, probably fifty million dollars. Uh, it's yes, it's sixty-seven million dollars as per the approved documents. But we are bringing it down to about forty-eight to fifty million dollars. Wow. Um, and I think it's very um, important to. <laughs> 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 uh, you know, basically, I mean, we have done a lot of cost savings. Of course, I mean, we have uh, we are a country which you know, uh, and we have to manage our resources. True. So what we have done is that we have not gone for a big bank approach. Uh, we have uh, searched out Pakistanis like Athad. Uh, he has a very strong background in customs and trade. He was working abroad. We enticed him to come and join us, you know, and work with us. Uh, so he left his really cushy job in Dubai and came back and, you know, yeah. he's been working Dubai with Dubai customs us. and everywhere. Sir, I mean, <laughs> he's, he's had it all. He's got the T-shirt along yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> then I needed to ask a very simple question. Shazad pointed out about, you know, uh, a website being simple. What about the user interface? Because normally people, people over here get intimidated by anything that is either new or made in a difficult manner, something like that. So how about that? Uh, absolutely. I, I totally agree. UI, UX is basically where we are, I mean, uh, seriously focusing on from the uh, while at the time of designing. I mean, this is actually one of the capability G. that we are ensuring that once uh, the, the trader uh, logged in or his any of his agent, for example, cargo agent or clearing agent, freight forwarders, what, whosoever. So once they are actually logged in, they should not really, uh, you know, uh, see it as very complex user interface. Either uh, the the adoption that we, the, the vision that we are actually mm -hmm. having is that the, the most of the trade data information is actually we have. Mm -hmm. And even at the time of when they are submitting their goods declaration, it's usually ha we have it. We would like that something we should come up from the data warehousing and business intelligence perspective, we should upload that data information down there before he is actually lodging his uh, or submitting his declaration. Hmm. All he needs to do is just to say that, well, is this correct or wrong? Yeah. He does not even need to you know, it submit it again and again wow. and again and again. That's again. Great. Or for, for the, for, from that perspective. However, I mean, we are, since we are underway and uh, with the adoption of uh, the emerging technologies, this can be possible. And this is where we are heading towards. And I believe it is possible because, you know, as soon as you start to type on Google, you know, so you haven't completed yes. your centers of word, you know, it already gives you, you know, all of those results as well. And I think it's better for people to understand in any case as well. But sir, let's talk about people who are differently able, people who are visually impaired. You know, how do you think, because a lot of people are coming in Alhamdulillah and they have their own businesses. So how do you think PSW is going to work, uh, you know, mm. will help them or in fact give them an opportunity to work? In fact, in fact, for all, actually, I mean, uh, everyone, because this is this is uh, a, a public sector in in public sector. It's very rare, uh, usually. Uh, uh, the way we are actually developing our our capabilities and our networks, it's usually happening in mostly in private sector. You you don't see it in the in the in the public sector. True. I normally trust me. Uh, I work. Uh, I mean, globally. all over the world. But uh, one of the biggest challenge uh, which I have ever faced is the top management commitment. One wow. of the challenge. This is not here, and this is very rare here. Wow. 
as well. I think that's a compliment to Aftab Sam over here. So let's refer back to Aftab Sam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, absolutely. Right. Team now, the same way, when, when it comes to the skilled uh, resources, we definitely require all type of resources, True. Uh, specifically uh, those which are good in artificial intelligence. We need uh, data, data scientists, data experts who should, be, who should come up and then develop the frameworks for us. Mm. And, and which is why I'm going to move on to Aftab Sahib away. So Aftab Sahib, when, you know, uh, unofficially, if people within the government sector get to know that, hey, you know what, there's a new setup opening up and, you know, they will be hiring a lot of people, already a lot of people are calling you. And, you know, hey, you are, and you, you wanted people who were scientists, you, you wanted people who were good with artificial intelligence. And sometimes it's just a job which, is, uh, which has so much pressure. Mm -hmm. So how do you think that you will make sure that each and every individual which you're going to hire for PSW will be the one who deserves that particular job? Because I've seen that happening quite a lot, and which is why, unfortunately, you know, even after 70 <coughs> years, we're not where we were supposed to be. I, I think, again, that's a very good question. And, you know, I mean, people often ask us why did we decide to make a, create a new company to implement a single window system. Mm -hmm. It could have been done by a customs mm -hmm. department. It could have been done by FPR, which has a stellar record, by the way, in implementing reforms. So the reason was that we wanted to have a setup where we could have hiring and firing powers, where we could make sure that there are performance appraisals, True. which are objective-based, there are KPIs, which are being followed and implemented. We wanted to make sure that, you know, whatever the setup is, it would be free from any bureaucratic or political interference. And, you know, so far, Alhamdulillah, we have managed to do that. Uh, so all, I mean, everyone claims that we do recruitments on merit, but we actually follow that claim. Right. We have a very open competitive process. We have very good, well-developed job descriptions. We are a very young company. I mean, we started operations in um, April 2020, I yeah. guess. And, you know, I have been working under a year as the CEO. So we are still developing a lot of our processes. But there is a very, very clear approach towards how people are going to work and how their performance is going to be measured. I think one of the points that I also would like to bring in here um, through you is that uh, we have kept a very lean team. Right. So we are not looking at a huge organization. We have no offices anywhere at the borders, at the dry ports, at the ports, no way. We are just two offices. There's a very small setup, uh, which is based in Islamabad because we have to work with government a lot and that's why I'm here. But the bulk of our team is based in Karachi. Uh, the total organization size is not going to be more than 220. And even that we are reconsidering because we are going towards a model where we actually shake hands with the private sector. Wow. And my vision has always been that, you know, if there's private sector that does work better than us, mm, we true. should not get into this space. Rather, we should partner with, with them. Collaborate with them. And collaborate. We give mm -hmm. them our platform, we give them our branding, we give them the government backup, the legal framework, and let them develop their products. So wow. very quickly towards the end, uh, one last question, and that is that, so what happens is that, for example, if I'm going to invest in a residential society, you know, they would be like, hey, you know what, we're going to give you five lakh rupees if you start constructing your house or plaza or whatsoever. You know, they will offer me a benefit to kind of, you know, share their transition. So now when we talk about transition, uh, moving on from an older practice to a very newer technological practice, do we really need to benefit people because a lot of traders weren't already in the tax network as well? So, you know, how mm -hmm. do you think that uh, we're going to kind of benefit each and every one of them the way they were already? and that there's not going to be any difference with their trade. In fact, rather, it will be more profitable and helpful. It has to be a win-win. Uh, so, you know, one of the things that we are doing is that we have a very agile approach towards implementation. So we want to make sure that if you're talking about all of this stuff, we have not talked a lot right now. There mm -hmm. are a lot of other things that we are bringing in. They are not aspirational, they're actually happening. But we want to bring them quickly. It's just like your phone. You know, every other month you get an iOS update or an Android update, mm -hmm. and you know that something is happening. There are new products, new interfaces like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same thing with us. Every new, uh, every month we are adding new features. Number one. So number we have an application as well. We also are web enabled. Okay. Um, uh, the other thing is that we have a very strong feedback system. So there are three things that we are working on: provision of information. So you make sure that everyone has access to information. So there's uh, non-compliance goes down. All right. Number two, you give them a very efficient uh, paperless system, so everything is just online. Mm. You give them track and trace, you give government the, uh, the ability to actually look at the transactions that are happening, that's the system. But at the same time, you strengthen your customer service, like Atha said, and you make sure that there's a feedback system. So if there's something that we have implemented and it's not bringing the results that we hoped for, we would always change it based on the feedback that we get from Oh, that's wow. wonderful. So thank you very much, Abdaab Bhai, for being with us. Thank you very much, Atha Bhai, for thank being with us. So Lovely much. to be in conversation thank with such so amazing, much. vibrant gentlemen as well. Mm. And, you know, I'm, I'm happy, actually, you know, because this is something which 
I might have envisioned for Pakistan and thank you very much wow. for making my Doing dream so much come true as well because you know time, yeah. half of the time that's what the problem is and I would actually want to say it in Urdu as well so you know mm -hmm. so that the message goes out for the larger audience so khawateen huzrat aap mein se jitne bhi log hain jo tijarat karte hain bahar mulkon se aapka saman aata hai aap yahan se Pakistan se saman bhejte hain Pakistan single window aapke liye ek aisi aisa platform hai jahan pe aap jaake ek to sab cheeze ghar pe baithe kar sakte hain aapko sirf ek laptop chahiye aur wo aapko batata rahega sath sath ke yaar ye aise karna hai aise karna hai har pure process mein aapko sath sath lekar chalega lekin iske baad ek aur mazedar baat ye hai ki aapko kisi bhi customs agent ko phone nahi karna padega ye puchne ke liye ke yaar meri phalan cheez aa rahi hai iske upar kitni duty lagni hai kitna tax lagna hai uske liye ek alag website hai jo main aapko bata deta hu www.iipp.gov.pk us pe jaiye हर अशिया जितनी भी अशिया है खुरदो नोश है गाड़ियाँ हैं जो भी मसले मसाइल हैं सब आपको यही मिल जाएगा किसी को फोन करने की जरूरत नहीं जस्ट लॉग ऑन टू पी एस डब्ल्यू एंड आई थिंक इट विल गेट यू जॉब शॉर्ट इट विद दैट बिकॉज ऑफ ताफ साहब ही सेट दैट इट्स अ विन विन आई थिंक दैट्स समथिंग विच आई वॉन्ट टू टॉक अबाउट इन द सेकेंड सेगमेंट इज वेल वाई एंड हाउ आई थिंक दैट्स वट विल एक्चुअली कीप यू ट्यून इन टू पी पी वर्ल्ड सो वी हेडिंग आउट टू वर्ड शॉर्ट ब्रेक डोंट गो एनी वेल बी राइट बैक गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग
Welcome to World This Morning. Before going to break, we were having an amazing discussion about uh, the trade sector, how we're bo boosting it and how it has been digitalized and how we can use it right from the comfort of your own home. But then something you were talking about, you were saying something like win-win. What was that about? Exactly. So, so it's uh, before I actually kind of tell you about what win-win is and how we're referring to it as well, ladies and gentlemen, obviously when we talk about technology, when we talk about the industrial revolution, I think we are dependent on uh, technology quite a lot. But it's not just that. You know, the person is not only going to learn mm -hmm. from uh, Google or probably Google Scholar or all of those other websites which are out there with such scholarly articles. I think we still are going to love authors because uh, mm. the way they write or the way they will make sure to kind of paint a picture of their that's own a experiences. That's personal experience. Exactly. Yes. I think yes. it's something which you're going to learn better from as well. True. So when we talk about having a neighbor such as China, ladies and gentlemen, where we have been so friendly, you know, we've been saying Park Chin Dosti Wong Swa and we totally mean it yeah. from our heart or from the bottom of our heart. But at times what happens is that this is the dilemma which Pakistan actually even did face and that was that the West really used to kind of negate all of those positive aspects True. of the country just in terms to promote their agenda. Exactly. Now imagine, exactly. ladies and gentlemen, that one of our very beloved Pakistani went to China and as soon as he landed in the next two days, he planned to write a book, which wow. actually came out with wow. the title Tsunami. And so it obviously tsunami in the first place. And then when we talk about China, you know, that's the kind of a global power China is emerging to be at wow. as well. Now, when they are going to become a global power, uh, how do you think they're going to carry their traditional values and all of that? How do we talk about their <coughs> culture? How do we talk about their civilization? Their how do we talk policy. about their economy? It's something to get an insight. We're very lucky that we have actually invited the author of Tsunami over here with us, ladies and gentlemen. We're lucky that we have been joined by Bukhari, retired Abdul Rahman Tarar Saab. Hello, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for inviting me. So thank you very much for joining us. Wonderful to have you. So let's start from the beginning. Why were you going to China? And when you landed, why did you decide that, hey, you know what, I really need to write a book about them? Uh, uh, I, I uh, had an opportunity to decide whether to go to China or to some other country <coughs> for uh, higher education, military education. Wow. Right. So I opted for China because uh, it excited me. Hmm. Uh, because since our childhood, we were hearing like China is a friend and every year they would, you know, we add one more mm. word with the friendship with China. True. So I thought that it's worth uh, exploring mm. a country <coughs> because uh, when I was in service, we would, you know, very often get a uh, chance to interact with the uh, Western uh, militaries, sometime, you know, un under the flag of uh, UN or mm. sometime uh, different Joint exercises. Yeah. But there was uh, a very limited uh, exposure to China. Whereas China emerged as a reality very close to us and its future uh, ambitions, its future plans affect Pakistan in a very big way. True. So, but when I decided this, but whatever perception, whatever idea I had about China was primarily based on Western media, Western books. Hmm. So I had, I, I would not hesitate to say that some negativity Mm. Yeah. <coughs> so, when I uh, went to China, so it was a very pleasant surprise. So, what all I had was absolutely, uh, it, 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 it was different. wrong. It was very different. Totally China different what from I how saw. you perceived. So, when I saw that, so uh, I decided that uh, Pakistan's future is linked with China and mm. uh, Pakistan Pakistanis must know China and not only uh, how it looks, but how the Chinese think mm. and how their state functions. Because in future we are going to, you know, interact with them on much more uh, sensitive uh, issues than, uh, you know, only going and visiting China mm. and for various True. reasons. And sir, would you mind uh, passing the book uh, to me as well because I want to share it with our audiences <coughs> as well. Meanwhile, Mahin's actually going to ask you whatever. The, in fact, I think let's start from here. So if in a nutshell, I know it will be very difficult, you are to describe the book, that you know, for a reader who's going to read Chinami, what do you mm. think they will get from this very book as well? So you know, here it is, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, the first part of uh, Chinami is, <coughs> excuse me, is uh, what is China of uh, social media, which is dominated by uh, the Western, mm. uh, you know, government. Mm -hmm. So, 
how does the China looks like if we only concentrate our you know studies and knowing about China from Western media? And then I you know tried to debate and how China actually is. Mm. But <coughs> this is just a you know introductory part. The serious subjects which I tried to uh, initiate a debate was how China has been conducting its foreign relations right. with countries which were like having issues. You, you, it must be you know uh, an information that China shares uh, border with more than 18 countries and except one it has been able to resolve disputes with 17 countries. True. So except China. India. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> whereas West keep telling uh, countries around China that China is uh, is a hegemonic uh, mm -hmm. uh, is a is a country with hegemonic ambitions, and its rise would definitely mean their demise. True. That's true. Whereas if you uh, and and I have a chapter in this book which purely talks about history of almost 5,000 years of China, Adjusted. there has been never a single instance. We even talked about Ibn Shen. Yes, mm. in yeah. which China crossed its geographic borders. Mm. China remained as a world power for thousands of years and there was not arrow fired or a single shot fired. But whereas on the other side, any global power, any uh, superpower during its rise has been serious True. conflict. You know. Mm. There have been world wars. There had been, you know, uh, massive massacres, and countries have been destroyed. True. Even today, Even you today? can, you know, you can see. But on the other hand, you see, China has been able to resolve issues with 17 countries. It's not that's a small. A, that's a great and point, that yeah. too, with a country like uh, Soviet Union, they mm. had an issue for over one decade, and uh, Soviets mobilized their forces, even threatened to nuke China. Mm. But they were able to resolve. And imagine Taiwan, a small little, you know, island very close to China and which is, you know, one of the slogan of uh, Communist Party of China that uh, it has to reunite. But just see the patience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, despite provocations of every nature, mm. they have never once declared that they will invade Taiwan. And so sir, which, which is why, you know, I'm going to add over <coughs> here as well, because Alhamdulillah, I got the opportunity to work for Chinese national television as well. Oh, you know, I, I, didn't know I, I did uh, so a few programs, a series of programs. So PTV in collaboration with their television channels as well. We produced and directed programs, hosted them as well. They were supposed to run in China as well. Now imagine on every tier, on every level, I've seen their dedication, I've seen the passion they have, and I've seen how hardworking they are. And imagine if, my goal is to be a superpower. God forbid if you know all of these 17 countries you're talking about are going to be a hurdle in between. I think I would find a peaceful way to kind of make sure that I remember my goal and that's what they have always done as well. So my, now you can actually pose your yeah, question. Nee, I, w I would extend the same question that you were talking about expansion and they have been so peaceful towards their foreign policy and their approach. I think the basic conflict or the basic intimidation, uh, I think, didn't it start from BRI, Belt and Road Initiative and the kind of, you know, they had plans. Uh, that's they one say, initiative, yes. Yeah, they say they have plans and then the kind of investments that it is doing under CPEC in Pakistan and the kind of propaganda we see as you were saying that the West shows us it's it has totally different so uh, how would you tell us about that you see when you talk about uh, geopolitics the place at the top at the pinnacle is very narrow mm -hmm. you know West would not like or even if any other uh, you know empire would not like that they should share that place with somebody so let's not uh, even uh, question why they're doing it so you know they they have all the rights to uh, yeah. you know defend their position, but China has offered an alternative that look, it can be win-win for both the parties. Mm. So you know if they invest in Pakistan, it's not very conditional, but if you know when the West comes for with investment or with any trade agreement, that those things come with conditions. You know they question your way of living. They question your political system, mm. your, you know, issues like human rights and all those things. And that then becomes very conditional. Chinese have a unique uh, quality that they just don't interfere in your mm. domestic affairs. See, you know, there's a special one 
one chapter I dedicated for this particular aspect that if China had to interfere in internal affairs of any other country, which is actually a propaganda theme of the West, then Pakistan should have been the first country. Mm. But see, even when there was, you know, uh, there were uh, some sort of a communist party in Pakistan, and that was, you know, some had linked with Russia, not with China. And Chinese have never, you know, interfered in Pakistan. True come what may and imagine they have already invested like about if I am correct 40 billion dollars and they have planned to invest other 20, 30 billion dollars in uh, CPAC. But there have been you know uh, attacks on their nationals, their True. people have been abducted. But have you ever heard one statement from China that uh, they have questioned our way of mm. dealing these things? Rather. And uh, this recent uh, propaganda about uh, rolling back of CPAC or projects, it is because of COVID. Even go and see China now, the last three months, Shanghai was closed down. At this moment, Beijing is going through uh, strict lockdown. Uh, stri uh, smart lockdown. But people would not talk about this, that du during this COVID period, even the uh, trade has, I think, increased by 20 percent with Pakistan. And, uh, uh, activities on strategic uh, projects like uh, uh, Gwadar Airport and Highway are at, a, at, at full swing, even despite this fact that they had suicide attack in Karachi on uh, Confucius Center and there was a massive attack on Chinese workers on a uh, Heidel Power project. So I don't think uh, that China is a unique country and they have a unique uh, policy where they just don't interfere in your exactly country. it is indeed sir and i think you know it, it actually kind of um, uh, is a learning lesson for each and every mm -hmm. one of us and you know uh, mm -hmm. while being neighbors i think for each and every individual who really wants to prosper really needs to go to china at least one see for themselves as well mm -hmm. and i think that's how you kind of finally decided that you're going to write a book as well since mm -hmm. we short on time sir for, for our viewers who are out there because we go out in 46 different countries, where do you think they can get this book from? Is it available online? Can we order it? You know, some things of that sort as well so that we can wrap it up. The, the book was uh, published by Sangamil Publishers and it is available. I think they ran out of stock and the Marshall. second uh, uh, edition is being published. So, the, mashallah, mashallah. The book, uh, uh, this book is probably the first book which has been uh, you know, approved by a Chinese National Council to be published in uh, Chinese. Wow. But I, before okay. I wrap up, I just have one, you know, uh, message. Very quickly, sir. The, we, we can import various things from China, but our effort should be to learn the software, how the nationalism works, mm. how leadership has, you know, VN and foresight, and how True. they can plan ahead for like 20, 30, or 50 and years. And that's exactly wow. something which we were talking about in the first segment where we talked about or we spoke about Pakistan single window as well. But thank you, Ahmed for thank being you. with us. Congratulations in the first place as well that uh, the stock is sold out. Well, so uh, once again, if the bookstores are going to shelf it, please make sure that you. Uh, get your hands onto it. Learn from China, ladies and gentlemen. It's that's definitely going to change your well. perspective and view about China. Wow, that's wonderful. And here it is, the edition. And please make sure that you write to us I on our always. Facebook page, which is with the name of... Well, this morning. On Twitter. Well, this morning. On Daily Motion and YouTube. Well, this morning. And the fabulous repeat, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be at 5 past 10 tonight. For the next time, look after yourselves on the hot seat. You know, with the latest updates, uh, that will be Ms. Uh, Taiwan Nisar Khan. But until the next time, look after yourselves. One, two, three. Good, Good morning. morning.